Oh. All right, good afternoon. Welcome to Lunchtime Live here at the Tijuana River National Estuarine Research Reserve. And my name is Maria, and I'll introduce myself again. I just want to let people to get a, have a couple minutes to, to log in. Not everyone's right at noon. Hi, Anne. Nice to see your name there. And I'm standing here close to the visitor center because there's the visitor center behind me. And if you're here for lunchtime live, pretty and pink, you might see some pink in the frame. I hope you can see some pink in the frame. Hey, thanks for saying hey. I think you might be the only one watching right now. Ah, there we are. There's Anne Marie. Dedicated follower to the lunchtime live. Oh yes, all those people I miss are on are on today. Yes, you are dedicated. We really appreciate your dedication. And uh we're looking forward to seeing you again. Yes, pretty and pink. And I won't sing the song for you, but I haven't been able to get it out of my head since I came up with the title. <laughs> if you have seen the movie uh, and, and know the song, uh, we were, I was trying to be uh, uh, popular. Yes. All right. Well, we'll just go ahead and get started. We have a small audience right now and hopefully others will come in. So welcome to Pretty in Lunchtime Live, Pretty in Pink here at the Tijuana River National Estuarine Research Reserve, Tijuana Estuary for short. And as you can see, I'm very close to the visitor center uh, just behind me. So some of you might recognize where exactly on the trail I am. And I am on the trail, a trail that is open and uh, we may see some visitors come by and that's okay as long as I keep my six foot social distance, which I plan to do and I've got my mask in hand ready for that and I did wash off, uh, wash my hands with soap and water uh, every with, for 20 seconds regularly and disinfected my equipment before I started. So, and I mentioned this trail is open. There are some that are closed. Our parking lot is closed, but State Parks is increasing access to their parks. So stay tuned for that. And please remember, let's all uh, be responsible as we um, move through this, this time together, not just our time today, I mean, but this um, <clears throat> COVID-19, when we're all in this together, uh, working to flatten the curve. Right, and so we are bringing the our park to you. However, if there is a nearby nature close park to you, or you are close to us, we do welcome that you visit, uh, but responsibly. So thank you for that. Now let's move on to pretty and pink, right? And hopefully you can see some pink in the frame as I'm standing next to our first plant. So we'll talk about two today, and uh, and. Uh, pretty in pink we're gonna start with this one and if, for those of you that might recognize it does anyone recognize this rather large and I'm going to zo zoom in and pull the camera off uh, in a little bit here just wanted to give you that wide shot of this large perennial bush you can see I don't know if you can see how large this plant is. <clears throat> this is a plant that can get up to about 10 feet tall, 10 feet wide, can grow very thicket-like. This is the California wild rose. California wild rose. Yes, did you know that we had a native rose in California. If you knew that, you can give me a thumbs up. Okay. Remember, I love interaction. I love questions. So, so as we move through this together, I'd love to hear from you. <clears throat> uh, if you are uh, want to share anything later in the comments, you like an image, you can, or feel free to comment during our program. So I'm going to remove the 
the, uh, the phone and we'll take a little bit of a closer look to the California wild rose. Rosa Californica. Now let me... Yes, Tommy, I know. I saw that you saw some and that is why I thought you might be very interested in today's program of the pretty and pink. Oh, I'll try not to sing it. <laughs> I'll try to spare you guys. So here we are, the California Wild Rose and a very large stand of it here at the Tijuana Estuary. And by the way, I forgot to do that sound check. Is everybody okay hearing me? I have a new earpiece microphone, Bluetooth microphone today I'm using. It sounds, seems like it's going well. So there we are, the California Wild Rose, Rosa Californica, in the Rosaceae family. That's great. Thanks for that feedback, Anne. Appreciate that. And this is similar, a lot like the rose we might all be familiar with. In that, look at this, we'll start with the leaves. Can we see here? Can everybody see those leaves? I will do my best to be st as still as possible to avoid any blurring and shakiness. But we see, as you can see, in relation to my hand, these, in, these, flat, these uh, leaves are maybe about an inch or so long, kind of oval shaped, okay, with a dentate margin. Our margin, we talked about that as the edge, a dentate margin. And these are a soft, a soft leaf. You can maybe even see, get a feel, get a sense for what they feel like. And as I turn the leaf over, we can see that very prominent vein pattern, a pinnate vein. I've referred to this a couple times, that one main vein there with some smaller veins coming off the edge, transporting water to those leaves. Right. Ooh, it's a, the wind is, is with us today. And so this, this uh, California wild rose, Rosa Californica, an easy scientific name to remember and see like its other roses has well actually we'll just see these leaves are sitting on a what color stem yeah yes i was just getting to that to that bob you read my mind but we have, on this on this red stem kind of herbaceous stem you see these i don't want to hurt myself Yes, does it have thorns? I don't know if you can see this. Let me find another one, maybe with the lighting a little bit better. It's the same one. Not sure if you can see those thorns. Yes, it has thorns. So like other, like your, your nursery rose bushes, if you have a California rose and you do some pruning with it, it is, uh, it has thorns. You'll want to be careful. You'll want to wear gloves. Maybe you can see them in there, those thorns. Yes, and so like, like I mentioned earlier, these grow. <laughs> yes, I, I did my best not to catch my fingers on those. These, these make a great like thicket in your yard or in areas, in, in native areas, or in, I'm sorry, in outdoor areas, in our local areas where there's water, they'll grow fairly thick like this. However, they, um, they, can, they are found in arid areas and can handle drought. So this is a kind of a, a, a plant that's got some, some, vari some variability in it, in where it can live. It is found in California from the coast, all the way up to about 6,000 feet in elevation, okay, in elevation. 6,000 feet in elevation, okay? And the wetter the area, the thicker it grows. Now, though, what the part that you've been waiting for, the pink, the pink flower, right? So there it is. Oh, the wind, <laughs> but we don't see a, 
Now, some of these flowers have bees in them, so I was doing my best to choose one that doesn't have a bee. I didn't want to disturb its, its lunch. Oh, so the leaves look a little like, um, like nettle, yeah. Um, I fortunately haven't been around nettle very much, so I'm not, I, I, I wouldn't recognize that, but, um, uh, but that's great to know. Thank you, John. And nice to see you there, John. And so there we go. There's our, there's the rose, the rose flower, an open faced kind of flat rose there. Unlike again, our nursery roses, which are kind of more, more uh, folded inward. Five pink petals there. Now the variety of pink can be a pale pink to a deeper pink. And like our nursery roses, I'm giving it a little smell there and it is that sweet rose smell. That sweet, sweet rose smell. So this is our California wild rose. And you see it's got some, some buds. So it's still blooming. It blooms spring to summer. Okay, for spring to summer, the leaves, um, um, it, it, the leaves are uh, deciduous and they will go dormant uh, in the late summer with not a lot of water or winter if we've had a relatively wet year. Okay, so there we go, the California wild rose. You can see how wide this thing can get. Really thick, really, really thick. How many of you knew there was a native rose here in California? Now this will produce that fruit, that rose hip with tiny yellow seeds. And rose hips, rose hips have uh, some medicinal uses. You may have heard of rose hip and seen that in a lot of uh, teas or as alternative medicines. I just wanted to give you some, uh, give you some of that the, hoping this is coming out pretty clear. So there you see some of the older, so it's been blooming for a while. There's some of the older blooms. The petals have fallen, okay? Uh, but we still have some more to come. All right, Rosa Californica, California wild rose. Very large one here, close to the visitor center. So, if you are local and you take a visit, I don't know if you've ever seen this one before, but again, it's very close to the visitor center there. Okay. All right. So that's our first pretty in pink. And our next one, we're gonna be moving a little ways down the trail. So I will um, place you guys back up here on the tripod and I'll just warn you, this could get a little shaky as I walk. All right. But uh, the other plant is, a further, is further down the trail, so maybe you will appreciate this walk as we go. And as, for those of you who have been here before, you'll see we're really close to our, our garage and offices near the visitor center. And we'll be moving down the service road. And I'll do my best to get us there quickly without accident. And you can see today it is a sunny day with clouds, very breezy, nice and cool temperature. And so for those of you who might be chiming in now or tuning in later for the re recording of this, this is Lunchtime Live Pretty in Pink here at the T1 Estuary where we just explored the California Wild Rose. And uh, close to the visitor center here. And we're moving on to our second pretty and ha, fairly pink. So I kind of, this is where I, uh, this is all an interpretation. We aren't, this next flower may not look exactly pink to you. However, it is considered pink. Now, if you are seeing where we are going, there's that storage building and nursery where I was last week for the 
Friday episode of Lunchtime Live. That's that nursery there that was built in 2015 and our storage building built in 2009, 2010. So I'm moving down that trail and I'm getting a glimpse of our next plant. I don't know if you guys can see all the mustard that's come in with the, with the closures and the shelter in place, our trails. New Mother as Nature has, has taken over a little. So I'm just gonna pause for one minute as I show you a glimpse of our next plant, which is very abundant and so beautiful right now as it's flowering away. This one is a little bit mixed in with the mustard. So I'd like to move to one that's a little bit closer or that's growing a little closer to the trail. Here we are now. Can you all see this? Sorry about the shakiness. Can you all see this? This abundance of, well, to most maybe, this might be a little more in the lavender category. However, again, this plant has a variety in its, in its flower colors. But I just wanted to give you this, this shot of this, this cluster, I should say, this group of bush mallow or chaparral mallow from afar before we zoom in there to it. So there it is. How many of you have seen this plant before? It's a mal the bush mallow or the chaparral mallow. Malacathamnus fasciculatus in the Malvaceae family. This is another perennial and it thrives here. It does so well here. Year after year, we see this plant. And actually, before I move on, before I move on, before I move on, I forgot I wanted to say that the area where we just saw the rose, the California wild rose, uh, that was that area was for those of you who've been here before, might remember if you've been here in our when we opened uh, <clears throat> on the visitor center uh, was constructed in in 1990 <laughs> uh, that area was it was very degraded um, and it was restored in 1998 at an Earth Day planting that Debbie Good and I it was my first year here worked together she 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 really orchestrated that planting and we planted about a thousand plants in that area including that wild rose so that was uh, uh so those that rose has done really well over time so um uh, I, I, I look at that plant and it's hard not to think back to the early days of, of my early days of the estuary and, uh, and that wild rose is still blooming strong. So, um, and I believe Debbie is on here. So it's really nice to see you, Debbie. And, uh, we're going to move on to her favorite plant as well. The, um, the, uh, the bush, the chaparral mallow as I turn this around. All right. So. The chaparral mallow. Now this, another perennial shrub, gets even a, a bit taller than that, than that, um, than the the wild rose. Okay, and you can see it's these long branches, slender branches, that are giving it this height. Yes, the wild roses smell very, very good. I, I did, I did get to to smell them, um, and. Uh, they they are really lovely so they um <clears throat> uh, they're nice to have around the leaves don't set don't have the scent but that rose is very smells really good really sweet all right so then so the so the bush those chaparral mallow here they are um these are these single stem but long branched bushes shrubs okay that can grow up to 15 feet tall 15 feet tall and because they are so nin slender and and uh, and long they blow in the wind and again it is 
it's usually always windy here. And so there we go, there we see them blowing in the wind. Now let's take that closer look at the details of the chaparral mallow. Malacathamnus fasciculatus, for those who prefer something other than the common name, which could be bush mallow and uh, chaparral mallow. Yes. Oh, and the rabbits and squirrels love to eat these. Let's these lot these kind of lush, let's say, or maybe more soft leaves. So I've I've picked one near the top. It's kind of small, but some of these leaves get much larger, much larger, and we can see here that they have a more lobed shape to them of a more lobed shape oops let me find the sun kind of has gone away from us here hopefully the lighting is still still good there we go you can see that lobe shaped leaves these lobe shaped leaves Ugh. okay and you see that their their edges again have kind of that that kind of jagged sort of edge i believe we call it dentate and then let me find a let me find ah here we go maybe this is better let's flip that over and look at there we go we see the vein pattern yes there are butterflies that use the host plant I believe, um, well, for something, the, the leaf, uh, sorry, the vein pattern there. We see that it has some, has several kind of main veins with some veins coming off of that. We'll call, we call that one the palmate vein pattern. So it's a little different. And these veins, they're so prominent, um, which we don't always see such prominence in veins. So you're able to identify them. Um, but Yes, so like the, sorry, I have, I had a species list here. Yes, palmate, thank you, Debbie. Is it for the, someone asked, the, are they a host plant to any butterflies? Yes, the Northern Western Skipper and the West Coast Lady. Yes, Sony, the, those, those are two butterfly species. However, there are other, other butterflies and bees um, attracted to these flowers. And as Debbie mentioned, squirrels and rabbits love to eat those soft leaves that also might be tough to see. They have hairs. And maybe we can see that with the stem. So the stem of the mallow, the chaparral mallow, you can see kind of has that, you can see those little hairs there. They feel a little rough. A little rough and you can imagine as these get really tall if you had these and you wanted to prune them those hairs might irritate you as was told to me by Lorena and she has one of these at home and uh, I could imagine that because it is very rough and I can imagine these fine hairs would be a little itchy now why would a plant have hairs what would the hairs be useful beneficial for Oh, this is a plant found in northern Baja, Southern California, in, in dry areas in the chaparral or coastal sage scrub, in the coastal sage scrub. And a lot of times water, it doesn't rain in the spring and summer, or in the fall, or sorry, in the summer and in the fall. And so those hairs are one way plants could pull any coast, uh, moisture in the air out of the air, right, through those hair, through hairs. And if you've ever gone walking in the fog, you'll see how those, the droplets on the, on the, uh, on, on your own hair, right? Now I've even seen it in my, on my arm hair. It's a real foggy day. And I'm going along on the strand. All right, so now we take a look here at uh, the flower of the chaparral mallow and you can see they're a little more 
in the light, light lavender or lilac kind of color. However, they are described as being, being pink as well or white. And you can see they are arranged along these long stems at the ends of these long stems of this perennial bush. Now this, will, the flowers bloom in spring and summer. And again, they are doing some, this is not, this is just one of several areas along this trail where the chaparral mallow is just exploding, exploding with that pink purple color, uh, blowing in the wind as they do. And there's that, those flowers. See there, they've got little spots. It is, it's just exploding. So I had to capture it this week and lump it in with the rose because the rose is still blooming, but not, not quite as, as uh, profusely and abundantly as the mallow. And um, so I lumped them in together. Although this one is not really a variety of pink. All right, and let's see, not, why not? Not sweet, I just put my nose into the flower there. Not sweet like the rose. I guess there's a faint, faint smell, the flower. And uh, I don't um, really smell anything. Yes, it is a perennial and I don't know if this mallow was used by native, uh, is used by native tribes or if it has any medicinal, known to have any medicinal. I can, I will look that up. I do not know. I do know that the rose though with its with its uh, rose hips uh, does. Yeah. But that is a great question. So this one will, is not, um, uh, is a perennial, it's not deciduous. That they, um, um, so they'll, it'll, it'll keep its leaves all year. Flowers will start to die off, uh, you know, without, without after, when it get, getting into the dry season in the summer. Yes, they are so pretty. You're right, Debbie, they're so pretty they don't have to have a smell. They really are wonderful. So if you're a, if you're a nearby neighbor, if you're a nearby neighbor, come in and check out this trail. There's quite a few, I'm not, I can't see them from here, but as you head towards that Fifth and Grove entrance, there's a, a, another two or three clusters like this along the trail. So, oh, yeah, rose hips are good in vitamin C. Great, thank you. And then. Here we go, are where we were yesterday, the Matilla Hawks. I don't know if you can see them out there, up there, but they are those white dots sort of at the, at the, at the end of that vegetation up there. That is the Matilla Haw. They're still blooming, blooming nicely. So let, um, yes, bees are excellent pollinators for both plants. Um, these are excellent pollinators for both plants. So I am going to, trying not to step on the fence here. There we go. All right, so there we are. Lunchtime Live, it's been wonderful having you with me again for these wonderful, yeah, these wonderful sessions and I, uh, if you are just tuning in now or you're watching this later, thank you for joining us even for the short while if you're just tuning in now. And if you're watching us later, feel free to use the comments below to share any comments that come up or if you have any of roses at home or any uh, wild rose nearby or the bush mallow, chaparral mallow you wanna share. We'd love to see what you have that's pretty and pink. So anything that's pretty and pink, I would love to see what you have. So share with us later and thank you for your comments and questions. They really are wonderful as a, a way to communicate with our audience and, 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 and reach out to others. So thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you next week for Lunchtime Live.